Hey, Sean Frangella here for PremiumBeat.com on how to teach you how to make a custom 3D steel texture in Cinema 4D. So here is a render that I set up of this and the idea behind this is how to take a photo of something that you could take yourself and turn it into a 3D texture. So this steel is built actually from photo of this steel grate on our back porch that has this cool rusty steel look because I'm in Chicago and we got destroyed by winter last winter. So basically everything that's metal in Chicago looks like this now. And you can do a lot with procedural textures and things in the content browser, but sometimes you want, you know, a specific look and you want it not something that's as easy to make all on the computer. And you could do some great stuff by just taking your own photos and following some of these tips and get a really great result. So this is a bunch of photos I took of this to talk about this and other photos I took to point out things you shouldn't do. So it seems obvious of, you know, if you want to use something as a texture, take a photo, but there's a couple of really important things to make sure you do and make sure you don't do. So these are five that I took that might be useful or close to useful. And it's always good to, you know, have extra, don't just shoot one and hope it works. And the thing to do is always make sure you're straight overhead. You're getting even lighting if possible, and you're not having any very obvious lines where it's going to be repeating. So any of these might work. These are some examples of what not to do. So this should seem obvious, but it's a good point. If you don't think about it is these all have even lighting this because of where the sun is, it's actually cutting through some of the rails that are nearby. So this would not work because you'd see that every time it repeats. And this one is a little off angle, which doesn't seem, you know, that bad, but that's not going to work. So again, always top down straight overhead and as even as lighting as possible. So if we look at some of these and think about how it's going to be repeating, this is probably my best one to go with. And these ones look good, but we can see that there's still a little bit of lighting issues on the edge and that would be repeating. So what we want to do is create two parts and I'm going to just grab this texture and make it my main one. And you can see they're pretty high resolution. If I go to image size and pixels pretty big, which is great. You always want, you know, as high res images to work with as possible. And you can always scale them down if you need to. But what I want to do is create two parts. I'm going to have a main image for the texture and then a black and white image for my bump map. And I want to do a little bit of color correction and editing to make sure it works the best. So I'm going to just duplicate this whole background with command J and I'll call this main texture here in Photoshop. And then I'm just going to grab a curves and add some more contrast because I want, you know, some more information. And then on RGB, I'll just tweak those a little. So it's a little too much on the red tint. So on red, green and blue, I'll just pull these back a little. And then I'm just going to get a hue saturation for my adjustment layers and pull down the saturation just a little, just cause I don't want that orange to be so bright. And maybe I'll just pull my curves a little more. Now what we want to do is I'll just group all this by selecting them do command G and I'll call this main texture is we need to have a black and white image of this for a bump map. And that'll really help this seem three dimensional and act and like these areas are actually raised. So I'm going to duplicate this whole group, call this bump map. And what we want to do with this one is we can leave the curves, but on hue saturation, we need to take the saturation all the way down. And then I'm going to add a brightness contrast because I want to blow out the contrast. And when we do this, it's going to make it more defined. And it's also helping us to see some very subtle issues that we had with the lighting. So in this, it looks pretty even, but if I turn this back on, we can see that this is actually a lot darker and we want to fix that because as we're going to get some issues with the edges repeating. I want this to be completely as flat with the lighting as possible. So how we can fix that is actually get our dodge tool here, press O and with the left and right bracket, I can make the brush bigger or smaller or grab it up here. And I can just on the main texture, just click and drag and even this out. And since this is the same one, I can actually just duplicate this with command J and replace it down here so that my main texture matches that one. So that's going to make a big difference with not picking up the edges and making it feel a lot more seamless. What we can do now for our image and our bump map is I'll save these two files, save as, and how I like to organize this in a folder for my C40 files, just have text. So I'll call this steel texture 02 because I did a test first and I'll save this as a PNG. 
and no compression, not interlaced, and that'll save. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bump map. So save as, and now I'm gonna call this texture02 underscore bump. Make sure I save as a PNG. And now in Cinema 4D, I can start to work with those. So I have my scene set up already, but I'll just delete my texture tags and delete this texture and we'll build it from scratch. So all I have here, if we do a quick render, is a plane to serve as a floor and some objects that we could talk about how to texture things differently for different objects. And a couple lights set up with shadows on area shadow, just so we can kind of see what is happening and a camera with depth of field if we wanted to do that. But that's more of just to make it look pretty for that last render and not that important for this. So to get this texture working, what we can do is down here, make a new texture and I'll double click this and call it steel. And for a color, we're gonna go grab that image. So I'll get my steel texture O2 and I don't need to copy. And to start to see what this is doing and how adding some extra settings is gonna really make a difference. I'm gonna put this on our floor and you can see that it just projects it way out, so that's not what I want. Let me turn everything off except the plane. And in my render settings, I'm just gonna turn off depth of field because I don't need that right now. But you see that this really isn't what I was going for. So it's a really important point to note that these are textures and how they're being projected is the tag. And this is when this stuff really starts to matter. So if I turn this back on with option R, you can see that this thing is huge and it's projecting the whole thing, but we don't wanna do that. We want this to be a seamless texture on a floor that looks like an actual steel plate. So what I need to do down here is tile it. So I'm going to put like 25 by 25 tiles, but you can see, you can really see those seams, even though we did a lot of prep work, but what we can do is turn this on seamless and that's going to automatically mirror all of those edges and really clean that up. So we can see that there's a little bit of lines and what's nice is we can always go back into Photoshop and let's try and clean those up a bit more. So let's just again, get our dodge tool on this texture and I'll just paint out some of these edges just so it's not so contrasty. And then just save this as that same PNG. So I'll just save as PNG replace. And then I can do the same thing with my bump map. Just duplicate this and then same thing, save this as the same file for the bump and replace. And then in Cinema 4D, we can just bring back up our texture and on this image, click this little arrow and do reload image and you can see that that's going to clean up those quite a bit and we're not going to have as many and we're not going to have those very obvious seams so it seems like that was pretty simple but the big thing is to consider getting as close to that as possible when you're actually shooting these photos so if you're trying to do that from this photo or even this you're going to do a lot more work so the planning is really key here but this still looks flat it still just looks like an image and that's why we built that bump map so what we can do is go to bump check that on and then for the texture locate that bump map and what this is going to do when we load it is use that black and white information to push up how the lights are hitting this and if we turn this up a lot to like 500 you can see it's processing and that really makes a big difference it looks like it's actually raised and again if we just turn it off for a second we get a very flat image you can really see why this makes a difference so let's turn it up even more let's put it like 700 and that is going to really help to make this feel dimensional and 3D and not just a flat image on a plane because steel isn't, you know, these notches are 3D and what we want it to feel like that, but we don't want to model this whole thing because it would just not be necessary and be better to do this with textures. But what we can do is push this even a little further so we have our color, our bump, and in R16 we have reflectance now. So on top of that, let's add a little bit of reflectance with the new reflectance system. I'm gonna to go to add and I'll add a GGX. And that's my new reflection engine. So we can see by default, it's just gonna drop this on everything. But what we can do is similar to the old way, we can turn on Fresnel. So let's go to conductor. And then there's all these presets. So we can actually drop some presets of different types of metals onto this. So let's try something like this beryllium and that's going to help. And we can turn off roughness a little and then turn our reflection strength down. So it's not so high and we can actually turn up the bump strength of the reflection. So if we turn this down, we can see that this is the reflection that it's getting from that bump texture. So it's reflecting some of that and let's turn reflection strength back up a bit and we can change attenuation of how to, an additional idea of how it extends out, so let's do additive, 
And all this blending together on top of our color and texture is going to help give it a little bit of extra realism. Again, if we just turn this on and off, you can see even with the color and bump, it looks a little flat, but we turn that on and we're getting some nice little bits of reflection. So what we can do now is if we wanted this same material to be on the other objects, I'm going to duplicate this tag onto this cube by holding command and dragging. And you can see that's probably not how we want it. It's repeating way too much. So for this one, we actually don't want to tile it. So we could just put length UV at 100 by 100. And then this is where our projection gets to be important, which is why I have these different kinds of shapes. A flat plane, it's fine. This, we'd probably want it to be cubic, which is going to look the same. And then it's just going to texture one texture per side. And then I can duplicate that same texture onto my cone. But again, I want, want to change that if I change it to cylindrical. If there ever was a you know, cone with a steel texture, it'd probably look like that. And same idea with the tube. Cylindrical doesn't actually work quite well for that tube. You know, look what we're getting here. So it's important to consider what the object is when we're doing stuff like this. So this would probably want to be something like spherical. And then we don't have those issues. And then if we do a quick render and I'll turn it back on depth of field so I get that nice setting, we can go from here to just our base objects to here and we're getting our steel texture. It looks believable. It's seamless and it's working on all sorts of objects. And we were able to grab it just from a photo, which you could always do with all sorts of textures and just consider how you want to add a bump and add reflectance using the new reflectance in R16. So this has been Sean Frangella for PremiumBeat.com teaching you how to create a custom 3D steel texture from a photo. Be sure to stop by PremiumBeat.com for all of your music and sound effects needs and check out the blog on PremiumBeat.com for tips and tricks on Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other apps. And if you want to see more of what I do, you can check out my site at SeanFrangella.com as well as subscribe on YouTube.com slash SeanFrangella. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to all premium beat channels on YouTube and Vimeo to get more animation tutorials and I will see you at the next video.